Hi, it's Jeff. And Denise from MouseSteps.com. And this is episode number 256. 256. Of Mouse Steps Weekly. Sponsored by MEI Travel and Mouse Fan Travel. With about 80 travel agents who specialize in Disney, they can guide you through vacations to any destination. And I'll just say any Disney destination, but also almost any destination anywhere, including uh, even if you're in town and you want to go to Universal Studios, which is what you I just, just went. I just did, yes, uh, with uh, Mr. There, Axel just the had, other day. They had a great time, um, but they can help you, uh, especially, especially Disney Cruises, Walt Disney World, Disneyland. There's so much going on this year. Worldwide goodness. Worldwide goodness, yes. So anyway, check them out. And our first stop this week is Epcot. We found a few little surprises in store. The Epcot International Flower and Garden Festival uh, is going to kick off on February 28th, so we're less than three weeks from there, and it will go for three months till May 28th. And here it is. It's our very first look at the festival. Yes. Uh, so usually a few weeks ahead of time before the festival starts, we see the flower quilt come in, and a couple days earlier it had just been dirt, and all of a sudden beautiful flowers come in and this is the first planting they'll plant at least once more and i'm not sure if it's twice more so you'll see different color uh, flowers throughout the festival well i really like the purple look there it kind of has that mardi gras feel almost and a beautiful reflection off off the water so it was just so nice to see the first signs of the festival coming in and there'll be another flower quilt uh in a different location this is off the imagination walkway and you just saw a butterfly and behind that was the uh, work being done on the butterfly tent and there it is back there and i don't know if there's a mickey usually there's a mickey in here but i'm not i don't know that i noticed anything like that so we'll see well perhaps that'll be on the other side on the smaller quilt it is still epcot international festival of the arts time so you're still seeing all that stuff here and here is a look at the uh progress on the other side you could see it's kind of marked off with the little sticks this is over more towards test track the, uh, the Epcot International Festival of the Arts will be through the 19th, and then there'll be nine days. But um, one of the things that I said, uh, as far as a tip, is to come towards the end of the Epcot International Festival of the Arts because you're going to see uh, maybe some topiaries and certainly, obviously, flowers already, the flower quilt coming in. Well, this is your favorite time of the year because when you come into Epcot, you never know what you're going to see as the topiaries will just pop up overnight. Yes, and you see the flower towers here, which are also new, uh, and that is something you'll see all over the festival for the Epcot International uh, Flower and Garden Festival. And to me, this is my favorite time because each time now, it will be something different. And, uh, and not only with the Epcot Flower and Garden Festival, but with the Epcot International Festival of the Arts, there's something different too. Right, and this is a look at this week's uh, mural here. And you can see Figment taking shape down towards the, uh, the uh, right side. And then there's a postcard, but they didn't put Figment on it for some reason. So I kind of wish they had put the Figment on it, but... Uh, it's okay. I mean, well, we've you, already we already have, have a postcard. We have three other yes, postcards. Yes, we already have Figment on some postcards. So uh, anyway, I always like these every week so far. It's been a new mural, so I have my fingers crossed that uh, starting Sunday we'll have yet another new mural. Here is some construction going on for the new gondola system. Right. The Disney Skyliner, uh, they are having... Well, we've mentioned it a number of times. Here at the International Gateway will be one station. You'll have a station at Disney's Hollywood Studios. And then certainly then at some of the resorts like Pop Century and Disney's Art of Animation Resort. And uh, so we just noticed that there was some construction going on here. It wasn't too exciting, but it is, you know, it is fun seeing it going up. Uh, so we took a, a couple minutes just to get some photos and video. So back to flower and garden preview mode here. This area is where the cars usually are. And uh, I think I'm going to show that little dirt patch there. That's where Lightning McQueen has been. And I think across the way, uh, Cruz Ramirez was last year. Yes, and Cruz is coming back. I'm sure Lightning is probably coming back. I actually took a look at this on the uh, Disney site not too long ago, but I didn't. I just skimmed it just to get an idea uh, but this will be the kind of that Cars area again. Right, and I'm sure Mater will make a return because he's always been there as well, another favorite of ours. And, uh, and now we're going to move on to something that changes just about every week. It is the chalk art. Well, it actually, the chalk art actually changes daily. Like, you always have chalk art people, you know, not like from morning till night, mm -hmm. but for a good chunk of the afternoon and morning. And so here you have Angel. Angel is new. But every single day you'll find new art here. Right. Angel from Lilo and Stitch. And uh, is this Pleakley coming up here? Yep. And uh, we saw 
uh, this character at Disneyland Paris. Live. Yes. yes. For the uh, 25th anniversary, which is really cool. Oh, and we also saw this guy. Yep, Jumba, I believe his mm-hmm, name mm-hmm. is, and uh, a lot of characters. I don't. I've only seen Lilo and Stitch, a, you know, a few times, so I don't always remember everybody's names. But also, some of the uh, art here is not just characters, but also we have like an astronaut there. So this area is becoming one of our favorite stops this year. This is all new because, of course, last year the attraction was still open. That's Ellen's Energy Adventure, and here is a figment. Yes, and we have Tinkerbell on the side, and I believe these are created, the, this type of art, by the artist here uh, at Epcot, but next to them is a mural like the one that we saw earlier uh, next to Tinkerbell. And we were the artists for that because we participated in uh, this art right here. And there he is. There is Figment once again. Although Figment, as you mentioned earlier, not on the card this week. Not on the card. And he's funny in that he reminds me like of an 8-bit type of a Figment. Uh, maybe when you're really far back, it doesn't look like that. But kind of up front, I just think it's an interesting look. Well, you can't paint blocks with a perfect corner so uh, perhaps you're right about the distance and there should be a new one either today or tomorrow probably sunday i think sunday is usually uh, so far by, by the sunday first new mm-hmm. new uh, new one and that'll be nice to have uh, the fourth edition yep and i will be over at epcot on sunday so now we're going to switch gears we're going to be at the magic kingdom for the dvc moonlight magic event that our good friend curious axel invited us to and uh, it was quite the adventure Yep, he and his wife are both Vacation Club members, so uh, it was really nice to be able to be invited to this. And here we are at the front of the Magic Kingdom. We're going to be starting onto the bypass, the Main Street bypass, which we weren't sure why this was open. I'm still not sure why this was open. Uh, during the, like the Mickey's Not So Scary and uh, Very Merry Christmas Party, they have like decorations and such back here. Right, because you know, we're so spoiled. As you said, we, we go to all these, we've been to what? Three Halloween parties, two Christmas parties. And usually you go back here and you get a little welcome treat. So I was waiting for my little welcome half hot dog <laughs> for the DVC event, but uh, it is very empty as you can see, but it was nice to be able to avoid the craziness on Main Street to get into the park. Well, there was also um, like no decoration. So I was surprised at that, but here we are uh, in Fantasyland and we waited a couple hours prior prior to the party for Esmeralda and Clopan, uh, and then a half hour once the party started. So it was nice to be able to see a little happily ever after mm-hmm. while we were waiting in line. So uh, as you said, two and a half hours later, here they come around the corner. <laughs> it is Esmeralda and Clopan. And I'm calling it a party and it's, it sort of is. And uh, this is a three hour event, but we waited about f- almost five and a half hours for <laughs> characters total. Yes, yes. You really have to make your plans, <laughs> you to uh, plan accordingly for uh, for waiting in line if you want to see some of these rare characters. And these guys are rare. I have not seen them at Walt Disney World since the old Hunchback show at the former Disney MGM Studios, but we did see them at Disneyland last year, I think. Right. For the 62nd anniversary, they had, did they have 62, 62 characters? 62 characters that came running out into the street, and these guys were two of those 62 but of course we didn't get to meet them like we are here and we also saw them at Disneyland Paris last year for the 25th anniversary of the actual day the uh, in April and I'm not sure if they might be at fan days as well there's so many characters at Disneyland Paris fan days and hopefully we'll be over there. We know we're going to Paris, but hopefully we'll get tickets as well. Well, I'm I am sure somehow we'll find our way we're gonna try. into fan days. That's, that's the plan. So we can meet our friends here again. But anyway, it was awesome to meet them in person. To me anyway, it was worth the two and a half hour wait. And I mean, the one thing is if you do go to the DVC events, you really have to kind of choose. Are you wanting to see characters or maybe you want to ride rides? But like the characters can have very easily an hour wait for many of them. Well, the good thing is they do not rush you. That You have Mm -hmm. to admit you are given plenty of time, which is really nice. You know, sometimes you have to run, run, run right through. But uh, in our experience, everyone is very respectful. You have plenty of time to interact with these uh, these great, awesome characters. Speaking of rare characters that you don't see very much, I don't think I have ever had a chance to meet the uh, hippo here and the ostrich from Fantasia. And he's, I think you said it was Hyacinth. Hippo, yes. And I don't quite recall the uh, the uh, name of the ostrich. ostrich. And we do see them in the Easter parade mm-hmm. every single year, the Easter pre-parade. But I have not met them. And I still haven't met them because I got in line. I wanted to meet 
different characters. Well, that was so nice of you to, uh, to hold, hold, your hold spot. my <laughs> spots. But remember, the uh, the ostriches used to be in spectral magic, too. They would run around that one float. Do you remember that? I do remember that, yep. So, so uh, I, it, it, at least we have seen them. And you're right, the Easter, the Happy Easter pre-parade, I think, is when we would see the hippo. I wouldn't have minded meeting them. I just really wanted to meet little John. That's who I wanted to meet. Uh, the one character through the whole party that I really wanted to meet was little John. Well, I have to say, my friend Curious Axel was really egging them on here, getting them to do some Vogue moves. So uh, we had quite the fun experience, and I will link to all that on the show notes. And I got to thank again, thanks to Axel for inviting us to this. Mm -hmm. He was telling me that uh, DVC wants to have one of these uh, special events at least one um, once a month. So I think that's a very nice bonus for the mm -hmm. for the members. Well, I think there was, uh, I don't know if it was two in January. There Between January and February, there were three of them. And I know Typhoon Lagoon is coming up. All the different parks uh, are, I, not Blizzard Beach, but Typhoon Lagoon and then the four parks total this year. So, I mean, I, I think that's, a, as I mentioned, that's a really nice little uh, bonus. They seem to do a lot of things for their members. As a matter of fact, we had a chance to tour one of the cabins, the mm -hmm. Wilderness uh, Lodge. What do they call it? The Copper Creek Cabin. Copper Creek Cabin. So that'll mm -hmm. be in a future show. So anyway, after the excitement of seeing these guys, we're going to move on to the food. And there was plentiful food for all to be had throughout the evening. So on the guide map, they show the different areas that you can go to, and they have like hot dogs, chicken nuggets. It's a fairly limited amount of different items, but I don't even know if they no mentioned that there was apple slices and uh, carrots as well. Well, speaking of apple slices and carrots, these nice uh, cast members here that were kind of way over to the corner seem to have a, uh, a hold on all of those things. You can see they had boxes of them and they were very nice offering us anything we wanted. You can have chicken nuggets. There's some ice water there. If you wanted, you can have soda, I believe. Yes, you can have a, a full variety of different sodas. The different sodas, iced tea. There's a hot dog. That's actually curious. Yes, Axel's hot dog there, and there's a bunch of cookies and one of his soda pops in a Christmas cup. Oh, well, Merry Christmas. Merry <laughs> Christmas, indeed. And here you have been waiting, and you are finally seeing Little John. Not so little, by the way. He was really fun. Like, he dances and everything. And here you have uh, Robin Hood. And we've seen... I love this dance. Robin Hood and uh, Friar Tuck we've seen at the Limited Time Magic event. But I have never met Little John. And I have never met Little John. As far as I remember, maybe when I was a young lad back in the 70s, I could have met him. I, I definitely met all the others. And, and Robin Hood looks much different now than he used to back when I was a, a little kid. And I, didn't, I don't think I've ever met Little John. And I didn't even know that I wanted to meet him until I got here. And I'm like, <laughs> look how cute he is. <laughs> You know, he's just so active and so fun. And I really just was like, okay, well, that's the line that I want to get in now. Well, I think it's so awesome that uh, that you got to meet him. And, and it was a great experience. And, uh, oh, this was actually funny. Here is Mr. Axel here and uh, talking to the characters. And, uh, you know, Robin Hood likes to steal from the rich to give to the poor. So he tried to go into Axel's pocket, but there was no money to be found there. But the very generous <laughs> Axel offered to buy everyone hot dogs, yeah, not sure. buy provide <laughs> free hot dogs for all, including the other guests. And that's a thing we did throughout the night. Sometimes the cast members would give us a little too many of the snacks. So we got uh, some fun in handing them out to other guests who are very, very happy to get cookies and ice creams and all the uh, extra stuff that the cast members would give out. Well, there somehow ended up being like 15 Mickey bars on a tray <laughs> from the cast members. And I know Axel went through the line and, you know, handed those out. In the well, sometimes you line. ask, you know, just give me a few. And I think the cast members delight in giving you many few. Right. Uh, and here, oh, here we have these little guys. What are they called? Shenzi, uh, Ben, is it Benzai and, and Ed? Ed? I always remember Ed. And Ed seems to be having a little scratch mm -hmm. on the way uh, in there. But, uh, and I love them. They are from, of course, the Lion King. Right. And uh, I didn't meet them and you didn't, we didn't we meet did them. We did not meet them. We've seen them many times in the Boo to You parade at mm -hmm. Mickey's uh, Not So Scary Halloween Party. And this, these are the fireworks. They are called the Moonlight Magic Blast Fireworks Spectacular. And we didn't, we didn't go to Main Street to watch them. Uh, we did see them from over here in Adventureland. And then we did walk over uh, more towards Liberty, uh, Liberty Square and watch them from there. On the way to yet another line to meet Oogie Boogie. <laughs> and uh, it, the evening goes very quickly. 
So, uh, but anyway, the music is more like you have Moana music. You have different types of music than what you would find in like the Happily Ever After. And here is a Baloo and King Louie. And we weren't looking to meet them. We didn't even realize they would be there, but there was, they did not have much of a line. This happened while the fireworks were going on. So we actually were able to come and meet them and still make it over to the Oogie Boogie line before the end of the fireworks. And we still saw plenty of the fireworks right, on the move. Right, we still saw some of it while we were walking and there are uh, Mickey and Minnie. Now Mickey and Minnie, I only caught the tail end. They had already closed off the line by the time I got to them. We had our uh, good friends holding space in the Oogie Boogie line. So I went to do a little adventuring. You sent me a text to come and check out the dance party. And here is one of Axel's pictures from the uh, previous party. He was fortunate to be able to go uh, the night that it rained. He originally was not going to go, but uh, another DVC member he met at the resort invited him as his guest, so he got to go to two parties. And here we have uh, Daisy and Donald at the dance party. And Coda and uh, Kanai. Kanai, yeah. And uh, so I, Jeff was not even going to go to the dance party, but I'm walking and all of a sudden I'm like, look, characters, brother bear. <laughs> yeah, so. Absolutely. So I ran over there and I'm glad I did because it was nice to, to see this. I, I just thought it was a lot of fun and the characters were uh, really active and you know, I, for a dance party, I thought it, everybody was really having a good time, it seemed like. Yeah, it was uh, it was great. Lately, the dance parties have not had any characters, at least the one in Tomorrowland. Although I hear some characters are, yeah, the Incredibles are making a return. So, uh, With so Edna be Mode. Good. Is that right? Yeah. Oh, very nice. So, but the you can see Daisy and Donald here have like Frontierland costumes on. And we really never, I don't know if I've ever seen them in these costumes, so that was something new too. Oh, I, I know for sure I've not seen them in the costume. So again, thanks for uh, for calling me over. It was well worth it. I think now we're going to go and look at, oh yes, some of the treats. The, another reason we were over there was getting treats and some leftover snowmen pretzels from the Christmas party and some uh, nice apple apple uh, slices and uh, baked lays, which were very good. Well, you were in the line, I think, for Oogie Boogie at the time, and I went walking to get a snack, and I'm like, oh, look, pretzels from the party. But right here, Mickey bars. And when I got it, there was very little time left until Oogie Boogie was making his appearance, and here comes Oogie Boogie now. So I just threw it in my backpack, totally forgot about it. And uh, when I got home, Still a little cool. Not it was fully insulated. melted. It was, it was an insulated, insulated backpack. backpack. Correct. I never think, hey, I'm going to throw my Mickey bar. Well, not that I get that many of them, but into a backpack or any type of ice cream. I would normally never do that. Mm. And I think at the time I figured I'm going to forget this and it's going to be big trouble. But it was still good and it's still in the freezer frozen solid as we speak. Anyway, here is Oogie Boogie, who was tremendous. What did you say? We met him about a year and a half ago on uh, Halloween night. Yes, Halloween. It would have been, I think, Halloween 2016. Not last year, but he was over at Saratoga Springs because uh, a lot of the resorts have Halloween uh, characters. In the few times he has met, I have never heard of him signing, but we noticed he was signing his autograph this night, so you uh, took him up on that, and there he is signing Oogie Boogie for us. Right, I saw that the clipboard still had one more piece of paper on it, so I said, is it okay if, you know, we get an autograph? And uh, so that was pretty cool. That was awesome. So anyway, that was so nice to meet uh, Oogie Boogie. Very, very rare. I don't think he has uh, appeared very much, except for I think he was at a DVC event he was also. That around some that curious Halloween. Axel met him uh, at the time. And I think it was with Jack Skellington, which would have been very nice. But he is in the Halloween parade now, yes. which he used to not be. So we are seeing him more and more in the parks, especially during Halloween time. But obviously this is, you know, February. So... He's here, uh, you know, not Halloween. Yeah, he always seems to appear during the Villains events, like Vill uh, Villains Unleashed, he made an appearance. I think he was in the parade also on the 24-hour uh, day. So we've seen Oogie Boogie more and more around, but he is still very rare to meet. Mm -hmm. So that's about all we met in person on our night. But again, Curious Axel went in the rain uh, the week before and he met Chippendale in their Rescue Rangers outfits. And I think they were over in uh, Fantasyland. Right. And uh, and there is the Mr. Toad car. I don't think it was really as as attended because as you can see, there's like water on the so much water. It was really raining oh, pretty heavily. It was heavily. definitely not as well attended according to Axel. He said very, very less crowded and uh, getting to meet the characters not 
not at all as bad, but of course it was pouring rain. He did meet the, the three little pigs, and there's the big bad wolf huffing and puffing, and we're going to see them again. And so we did meet them when they had Long Lost Friends Week uh, a number of years ago. And that was, uh, this is in Storybook Circus, and then here we have Pluto and Goofy. We didn't even make it into Tomorrowland or Storybook Circus during this event. We did make it into Adventureland, Frontierland, uh, and there is a Moonlight Magic 2018 shirt. Right, so there is even merchandise at this event. Anyway, I had a great time. The three hours went way too fast. It all depends really on what you decide to do. I have another friend who didn't meet any characters, just went on rides, and he got to ride almost every attraction, and he had an awesome time. So it really is what uh, what you prefer. And thanks again to Curious Axel and Aliza for inviting us. We had an awesome time. Right, and we are going to be heading now. We spent a lot of time with them. We did a lot of meals, had a lot of meals with them. Gained about 10 pounds. A million with pounds. With our good friends <laughs> from uh, Belgium's visit. And another one of those uh, meals is Boma. And you can see it is $43 before discount for adults. So it has gone up in price since we were there last. Well, some of the some of the meals like here in Ohana cost the same uh, for dinner. And we did both of them both of those. I mean, you're really on kind of a character meal pricing level, which surprised me. It's been a while since we've been here. Boma is one of still one of my favorite restaurants. We are here for breakfast pretty much every year, uh, at least once for your birthday yes. and sometimes other times as well. And it was just about uh, a month ago or so we were here for my birthday and we did a show on that. So some of this will look a little bit familiar, but the food completely different for dinner and it is wonderful. That is the salmon right there. And a lot of the food rotates. The soups, sides, and entrees all can rotate. And on this day here, we had pork shoulder and that's the pork shoulder right there. And we also had spice crusted beef sirloin and you found out a little, uh, a very valuable tip about that. Well, I had just asked if they had something that wasn't quite as rare. And he said, I can just throw it on the grill. And so you can just ask them, you know, if you go up there and you see it looks a little too red, which there for me, it did. They'll just put it on the grill for you. Of course, after Axel and I heard about that, we had to both go and test that theory just to make sure it was extra hot and crispy. And it was. So uh, that was a good uh, tip of yours. Here is the star of the show outside of the zebra domes, of course. The soup. I had this one, the curried coconut seafood stew, which was wonderful. And you have corn chowder there. I had the butternut squash soup. And while... Uh, Jeff had mentioned that these do rotate. The butternut squash soup has been there ever since I can remember. And I started going here for dinner and breakfast before the resort even opened um, on a test day with I worked for the Disney Reservation Center. And that has been one of the most popular soups. Uh, and it is a very good one, too. Well, perhaps the, the most popular ones mm -hmm. will always be there. But it's nice that you, you can have a variety and you can go and try different things. There was some uh, peel and eat shrimp there. And we're going ahead to show some of the desserts. And my very favorite dessert, the very famous dessert here, zebra domes are uh, coming up. And you don't have to come here to Boma to have a zebra dome, fortunately. You can also go to the Mara and uh, pick up, uh, I don't know if it's, it may be just four in a pack, it used to be five. Uh, and so you can buy them just separately. You don't have to spend 43 necessarily for dinner on them, but there are a lot of other desserts. By the time it came to dessert, I was pretty full already. I had one zebra dome, which is crazy. They also have the brownies are very good and the chocolate chip cookies are very good. There's so many little desserts here. Well, you see, that's why you should follow the pro tip I'm about to give from Jeff. And here's a last look at the dessert. You should start off your meal with a zebra dome. Can't go wrong. I had my soups, but before that, I had a aperitif of my nice zebra dome. There is that uh, seafood stew there. And I also had the uh, oxtail stew. And both of those were exceptional. Just that, just that right there would have been enough for a great yes. dinner. Mm -hmm. But before I even got to that, zebra dome to start the uh, the experience. Can't go wrong. There's a little tip right there for you, Denise. <laughs> but I don't do that. So it wouldn't it be nice though if they had a way where you could just bring like some of the soup, you know, just oh, take yeah. a soup to go and that would be it. And also it includes a beverage. So there's the jungle juice and of course a diet Coke, a diet Coke to go along with this. Sure. We have bread service. I got some bread for the table. This was not all for me. Right, and there was some hummus there. I mean, for me, this is the most uh, unique probably of all the, uh, and always has been since they opened about 20, just about 20 years ago, 
of the uh, dining, you know, uh, certainly of the buffets. So uh, here is a first little warm-up course here with some salmon, a little rice, and uh, of course asparagus hot off the grill, a little uh, samosa up there. Very nice way to start off for a little appetizer. I there. really like the asparagus here. I think that Boma does asparagus better than anybody I've ever, I think it's the best asparagus I've ever had. So here is another tip when you come to your salad round here. This is my salad round. Also throw in another zebra dome. <laughs> this way there's no chance, like unlike Denise uh -huh. who only had one zebra dome, you will make sure you have your full allotment. You know, I thought my one was a, a full allotment. So, I mean, I, I wouldn't have minded having two, but I was pretty, as I said, I was full. So there is, what did you have here? Is this that some, is some chicken? chicken, right? And a little more rice or couscous perhaps. And I think that is the spiced beef sirloin. I really like the different unique flavors. I will say the samosas had quite a kick to them. Oh yes, I don't they remember sure did. what was in them. It wasn't the standard like potato samosa. It was, uh, it was very spicy. And we finally made it to dessert. And this is Jeff's plate. He had that some- That is not all my plate. I shared all this. <laughs> Bread pudding. Well, you have a brownie here, which the brownies here are very good, I mentioned. And then the zebra dome. There's also cheesecake and, and like a couple little tart items. I don't know what... I didn't really have that much dessert. I was so... Did I mention I was full? Because yes. I was. And I also want to mention this includes coffee. So uh, after a big meal like this, if you want a nice coffee to uh, finish it off, no extra charge. So you can have multiple different types of sodas. You can have jungle juice. You could have coffee, water, all at the same price. And for me, that's one of the benefits of a buffet. Like when we come here for breakfast or if we go to Trails End for breakfast, you can have orange juice. You can have like the jungle juice. You can have... You know, I like unsweetened iced tea mm -hmm. and you can, you know, finish with coffee or hot chocolate and it's all included in the same price. Again, to me, a benefit. And here we are. There are your animals. Yes, just like on my uh, birthday video, we're going to pan around. I don't think we're going to see the baby hippo this time, but uh, that was pretty funny. It was an awesome experience. Thanks again. Again, we had such a great time with all these adventures with uh, Curious Axel. We're gonna, it's going to be weeks worth of, uh, of footage for our various shows. We have so many restaurant experiences. We're even going to have another one tomorrow, the Edison. <laughs> yes. Can't wait. Thanks again to our sponsor, MEI Travel and Mouse Fan Travel. Yes, please check them out. We, we are going to be talking a lot about dining and other experiences in the coming weeks that we just did over the last two weeks. And you know, if you book with MEI Travel and Mouse Fan Travel, they can help you with restaurants. They can give you information on really anything at the parks and cruise line and adventures by Disney, anything that you're looking to find out uh, in the process of booking with them. So we mentioned a lot of stuff coming up, not all food related though. We did take a minivan. We took a little cruise on the Seven Seas Lagoon with three captains. Oh yeah, with the pontoon boat. And then of course we mentioned uh, the Copper Creek uh, cabin and I'm sure there's more also, but it has just been like a whirlwind of the last two weeks. And a whirlwind of goodness. It's It's been really great because it kind of, I don't want to say we're in a rut. Like I just want to be at Epcot most of the time. That's, but it's nice. We did some different restaurants and you know, it really kind of got us to do a lot of different things that we can talk about in the, you know, in the next few weeks. Yes, it was tremendous. And uh, I can't wait to share all of it with, uh, with all of you. So anyway, thanks again for listening. Have a great week and we'll see you all next week. Have a great week.